Hi everyone, I'm Barry, and today we're going to be looking at the next Hunter the Parenting audio log. This is going to be Something is Wrong with Horse. While I am aware that technically this is going to be based on Horace from TTS, Horace and TTS literally had a single joke about how he's never going to be in the show in a random delusion that never was brought up again because it was just a joke about people who were never going to appear in TTS. So there's really nothing to base his personality on because we didn't get his personality in TTS, just that he was around in a delusion, and that was it. Were there plans for it later? I don't know, because I made a point not to read how it was going to end, because it kind of hurt too much to see how the third section of the final episode was going to go, because it, it, I just, it, it was pain at that point. I couldn't bring myself to read more. So all the same, link below, original video, hit it up. If you're done, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let's get started. Ooh, Hunter, the parenting, something is wrong with horse. Oh, it's raining in the other shack. Ooh, I think I saw this in the... Okay, one. Yeah, that 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 walking animation. Like, look at this. Sorry, it's actually not so much that it's an over the top wacky walk, or that he has the umbrella hat. And honestly, that perfectly makes sense for how crazy he is. He would use that. But more importantly, I'm remembering how they used to do walking in a lot of TTS, where they didn't actually move the legs. They just kind of had people hop, and they would occasionally flail the legs a bit. But mostly, it was just hopping. Here. I think they're actually playing up the fact that they have points of rotation for the various legs because he's just overdoing it like always because Big D is that flamboyant. But it's just... I'm kind of amazed at just something as little as that. The walking animation alone. <laughs> it's so cool to see how far this entire group has gone from animations that were literally hopping, like I said, to actually full-on blown out, intentionally over-dramatic, overdone steps because Big D is so flamboyant. I fully expect this is an intentional decision. It's just really cool to see that kind of growth and just recognize it. So what is on the back of his coat? Like we ever saw it before. Looks like Ouroboros. Also, why is there a hole in the partially patched roof? It's a horse with a bald spot. Hobble sport almost tripping. Drops me you my son. Many minas worth of blankets, food, and medicine. Okay, first off, I thought that was a bald spot, but that kind of looks like someone ripped out the mane. I wonder if there's a story there. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It, it does look like someone ripped out the mane. Ow. Also because of the joke, Horace was bald. So, yeah. Dude. Let me see you, my son. <laughs> oh, my sweet, darling son child. I'm so sorry. I'm feeling good. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. oh my God. He's babying him so much. I have no idea when this affliction came. Did you get lice? But I promise you, I shall help you overcome it. Now, Mini snort? time for my lovely Is he really going to talk in snorts the entire time? <laughs> Am I the only one who read that last Winnie as less excitement and more? Oh God, oh God, no, stop. I'm going to get that way. Go pay it down. There'll be no more horse plague in this household. Horse plague? <laughs> no plague last time. Last time? I didn't even know that's a Can horses suck? No, no, serious question. They don't have cheeks. Like, not in the same extent we do, like us and chipmunks. And a lot of the sucking action is actually based on pressure values changing due to cheeks. Hmm. Is that even something a horse can anatomically do? I am questioning the anatomical reality of something that's an online video on YouTube. From Bruva Alpha Sabusa. Also, wow, that's a new way I fucked up his name. I really need to get my head on straight when it comes to priorities. We're looking at. Oh, God. Good son, a very good son. Yes, he is. Mm, it does kind of support the changeling oh. aspect. All right. Let's get you comfortable and ready for Betty Bye. Horse now, blankets. now, you need all these blankets to keep warm, Considering my son. Considering there's a hole in the roof, you probably need to stay dry, too. Just the medicine. Yes, if he made the medicine. You. But now, you recall our agreement. They have an agreement? Mm -hmm. I, me, get to shower you in physical affection and worldly possessions while horse, you, get to hear my every woe and finally let me speak my mind. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest here. 
I think Horse is getting the raw end of this deal. Unless he actually wants to hear what Big D is saying. Huh. One, really looking forward to hearing what he considers speaking his mind, considering we literally had a glimpse of his mind, and honestly, it worked pretty well. It was actually really cool to see his thought process. But more importantly, what is he willing to verbalize that he thinks no one else can hear, other than Horse? Uh, so let us begin. Horse lays down the head. Down. Okay, way more intelligent, but Joe oh. also. Mm. Big pillow. Now, my dearest horse. Oh, God. It's become very apparent that my other sons seem incapable of even the... Simplest cognitive feet those. <laughs> um, I, you know, it, there's just a level of hypocrisy here that I find absolutely hilarious. Oh, oh, silly baby hands. <laughs> Take the job, really? for instance. Marcus goes and does uh, something utterly senseless. And there, you didn't tell him to not to. Like, On the other hand, I know why you didn't tell him, so it kind of makes sense. Like he couldn't have put two and two together. <clears throat> that boy did not pay attention during the math class I taught him Swirmy. A vampire eating another vampire obviously results in one double vampire. <laughs> okay, one, I have no idea where this is, but also I'm terrible at geography. That's not saying much. Two... If this is, I, I kind of want to just Google it right now, but I also don't want to do that. Uh, more importantly, he taught math with one vampire plus one vampire equals double vampire. It, it, with outside context knowledge, knowing that this entire process is, yeah, that makes sense. So you can see where Big D, when his thought process is, okay, Marcus is kind of like me because he basically said that at the end of it. He thinks very similar. If I give this hint, he'll get it because I would get it. Ignoring the fact that he gets it because he understands what exactly he's referencing. And without that context of reference, Marcus probably thought it was a math lesson and nothing else. He wasn't actually giving Hunter lore. And it's such an obvious thing on the outside. I just... <laughs> Sorry, I just... Things like this are really good lampshading of previous events. For example, in TTS and most of 40k on a whole, a big criticism is... A lot of the issues are because big... Sorry, uh, the Emperor wouldn't tell anyone what he was doing, so they fucked up in ways that they would have known better if he had told them, usually about the warp or a million other things. Most likely more than that. Here, though, you can actually see them lambshading this by saying, no, he did. He just expected them to understand when he was telling them because he can't tell them flat out because that would get them murder-baited. Probably should use a different phrase than that next time around. It's a little too close to something else. And I'm just not going to clarify. But more importantly, other than being baited for murder say for youtube boys <laughs> i really should think what i say other than that it makes sense because he's trying to tell them without telling them in a way that they can figure out but not say openly in case anyone hears which i'm not sure if anyone would hear but also give them the information so they can make the assumption correctly but they didn't and we can get that from our end because we can just ah, sorry i just this is good writing because it's a joke it's showing him venting because that's this uh, entire point of why he's giving this little lore dump, but also giving us the lampshade for previous events in the actual episodes of why they made stupid decisions, because he thought he had told them. <laughs> Sorry, I just... It's so damn good when they do this. It's just really well written. You were supposed to know this without me having to babysit his brain! <laughs> and he Babies. wasn't supposed to be doing something like that in the first place! He was supposed to interrogate an experiment, not gleefully commit war crimes and exper- hmm. Well, in any case, his curiosity goes far beyond what I wanted. If he wanted to torture them, he could have kept it to Mariah party! I want to believe he's referencing Mario Party, but also I'm not entirely sure. More importantly, unless I'm mistaken wrong, like, yeah, Marcus was all in on it, but Dor was the one really pushing a lot harder, a lot longer to do the torture. Marcus wanted learning, Dor wanted torture. Sorry, Dor wanted torture. Interesting how he's focusing on Marcus. Not incorrectly, just not completely either. My trust has been broken, not his. <laughs> And what's more, ever since, he's been heckling me with question upon question about the opery. Yep. Why do they not understand the dangers Did you tell them why? Them? Do they not trust me? 
Why shouldn't they? I tell them absolutely everything they would ever need to know and nothing else! But they don't understand why they need to know it, making the knowledge useless. Because he doesn't tell them why, because that's something they don't need to know. But it helps. I just... It, it. Part of me right now, loving this for the story. But also because of all the shout-outs to all the things in TTS and Warhammer, you're like, yes! There's so much just a yes moment. Not just a little yes. A big yes. Like the kind of... Uh, Let's say moderately sized yes that should be censored on YouTube levels of yes. Also, it's a massive shout out to everything I've been shouting at 40k for a while, but it's just mm. it's for their own good, horse. You should know this too. I keep things from you as well. Do you? Oh, but it's not like I don't trust any of you, especially you, my dearest horse. It's just can a horse be a I told good? you all my secrets. Your giant brains would implode from the weight, and you'd be hunted for sports in the filthy streets of North. The last one's probably a literal thing, just on yeah. Ipswich. Oh, well, that's Ipswich. I know and nothing about yet, the city. Town. No, Country? Continent? Whatever. It's not entirely it, is it? Why neglect you, horse? What? Why do I keep the deep secrets of my vaunted memory vaults from others? Especially you! Children who have not betrayed me. Is it truly because this knowledge is too dangerous to be shared? Okay, let's. We gotta go back to this line. Children who have not yet betrayed me. I just. This episode very much feels like a. More of a direct shout out to TTS as opposed to just lore that references TTS as a spiritual successor. Because this line only makes sense. In two cases. One, it's a direct reference to TTS, which is where I'm usually taking it right now. Because, yeah, a lot of his children, half of them, possibly more, depending on how you believe some of the lore played out, betrayed him. And here, the only other way this means, oh, I forgot he has family and they're not around anymore. I kind of forgot about that part. Ah, so he has another family that did betray him. Good to know. Is it truly because this knowledge is too dangerous to be shared? Did they betray him after shared knowledge? Is it because I want to protect you? And the only way I know how is to keep you ignorant and placid. Well, they're not good at the placid part. self-cannibalizing Ouroboros. But you failed to meet my expectations when confronted with trials that you could have overcome if I had just given you the much-needed information. But then face further trials if you did give them. What if I did fully bring you into the light? What would you do with the real truth, horse? Probably betray you because would irony. You die horribly to the things hiding in the dark, or would you fall in other, far more sinister ways? Or might things actually turn out for the better? Could they? Um. Okay, so this is literally four lines of dialogue that I never thought would happen. Not because I think Big D is kind of set in his ways. I think he's actually very dynamic for someone who's as old as I believe he actually is based on a lot of the clues people were giving in the chat and in comments about it. just some of the references he made are only going to make sense if you're a couple thousand plus years old. But more importantly... Even setting aside how usually when you're older, you get the more stead in your ways you are. And if you're that old, you're basically a rock when it comes to new think. He's very much dynamic in, in his general outlook. Again, you can't be a punk if you're set in your ways. So just this. But more importantly, the idea that he would actually entertain even a hope, even a cast off talking to a horse who I'm assuming is going to start talking back at some point rather than neighing and have a conversation with other people because it just doesn't make sense otherwise. I'm just assuming that this is so out of left field that he would even entertain these thought processes. I didn't expect it as a six ser six serial. Wow, I can't speak today. Serial successor. There we go to the emperor. I didn't think that would possible. Some as old as he probably is in the hunter canon so far. 
I'm just not used to people who have this much weight behind their timelines even entertaining these thoughts. I never expected it. I never expected someone connected to the Emperor to do it. This is absolutely more shocking about his characterization than literally anything else he could say at this point. If I'm about to eat my words, well, that'll be something. Oh. Mm. Even entertaining. <laughs> How from outside? Rises up. That's Krakus. Oh my god. <laughs> Call it owl. Oh my god. That has completely ruined my train of thought. Neighbors. How I lose the. I'm not sure it's a horse pun, but if there was a dash there instead, I would completely believe it. Also, wait, you spell neighbors with you? Have I been spelling it wrong for years, or is this a British thing? Could be both. Concept. What yeah. the fuck was I saying, horse? Oh, Vomit's right. blood, holy shit, Blood's what the hell? Here is Fitz from the top of the Algonquin Club. Now let me set the scene. <sighs> New York, year 1882, the philosophy Okay, I thought he was just like, said some kind of little horse. What the fuck? I don't. Mm. What the fuck is up with horse that he's literally vomiting blood? I mean, I thought the medicine was just like maybe a fleer tickling because he's missing. Did he get brained in? What the hell is going on? Just been invented. And under the silver lace ceiling from the top floor of the Algonquin Club, two swingers by the name of Dietrich to tell her and Horse were cutting up some fucking rug. Dietrich had the sweet honey on his waist, but Horse was heading deep in some of that good spitted shit. Dietrich is about to make some new social security number with his honey. Before he could get any further, the fucking fuzz showed up and started the raid on the speakeasy. So we had to cut more rug. So I hopped onto Horse and we made our way to the parking lot. Thankfully, our ride was impounded there. When I got there, I strapped Horse to the bottom of the bus and I got and there it was just utter nonsense of popping state lines and making some new ones, eh, horse? Hey, 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 hey. How old is horse? More importantly, I'm assuming horse was not always a literal horse because that entire. I was going to say it'd be too weird otherwise, considering he just said he strapped the horse to it instead of a person, it's an actual. You know what? No, I'm assuming there's fan art of this at this point. There's actually a video of him with a horse on a early 1900s bus. When did buses come around anyways? I know they're not new. I actually don't know. Yeah, you remember it. Your brain is humongous. <laughs> Tired. Oh, now, my boy. Papa's here. And there's just random kitten walking by. Oh, Big lad. Door gently creaks open. More importantly, notice how I was talking early on about the walks. Kittens is so much more staid and relaxed. You can just see him moving in a more natural method where everything Big D did was so much more exaggerated. Just, it's just so cool to see the growth in animation. Uh, Sir D. Ooh. Uh, it's time to change your bandages, and I... They're probably soaking wet. ...don't think it's sanitary for you to be sleeping with horse. Nonsense! Horses groom daily, and microbial infections only affect evil people! Okay, this is where I normally say he's just showing psychosis, but considering... One, I don't know nearly as much about World of Darkness new or old or chronicles or whatever and also because he does seem to have an entire thing are microbes just evil demons in this world or something i'm fully expecting someone to say no but also yes because that has actually been an answer i received that it's not that unless it is because sometimes it can be i fully expect to hear that now i i kind of expect he's not even joking about this um i still really don't think you should be out here though uh, horse is sick after all, and he's been coughing up a lot. Yeah, of what the hell happened? To him? That would be a Dying symptom. And you distress the horse. Wow. Oh, calm down, calm down, calm down. Horse. I will go inside if and only if you stay out here with him for the rest of the night. Oh. The other boy is always jealous of the fact that I bought actual shampoo for horse. You did? Yes. He did? At the 99p shop. <laughs> 
No, on the black market. Same place I get all my alkaloid alkaloids. Okay, one. I know what an alkaloid is. It's an opposite of the base. Actually, no, wait, that's something different. That's bases and acids. An alkaloid, I think, is a type of base. I have no idea what ergoloin is. I'm assuming it's something very caustic that really should in no way, shape, or form ever be used. But more importantly... Why would he need other products for hair? Are these not hair products? I'm just gonna, you know, this requires more chemistry knowledge than I know. I'm gonna just pass on this. Say, have you bought a new blender yet? Because you ate the last uh, one up. No. Probably not going to for but, a while. Uh, all right. All right. I'll stay with him until the morning, I guess. Capital old spot. Oh. Now be sure to feed him medicine every few seconds or he won't get better. Seconds? Oh, make sure to keep him warm with the blanket. Yes, sir. I understand. And I make sure to feed him the apples, horse? I will. I will. Good night, horse. Oh, God, Just scream very loudly if you need daddy again, okay? Bye-bye. Is he going to do like a really small thing? He's so extra. Right? And don't forget to refill his water if he gets fast! I did it! I did it! No worries. I'm scared to get the face for the best. Yes, sir. Uh... Okay, goodbye. I love you, horse. Awesome. He's gonna run right back in his way. He loves them! What the hell is up with horse? Holy Toledo. Yeah, also, uh, just that walk animation is hilarious to me. It's just so over the top and extra. Well, uh. Uh, horse! Are they actually going to talk? Mate, uh, how you doing? Oh, oh no, no, no. Right. Yeah, that's okay. probably bad. Uh, let's get you some of this medicine. Is the medicine eating up on coughing, the inside? coughing, internal bleeding, receiving hell. Holy shit, 800 quid? Where does he find the money? <sighs> Who am I kidding? He didn't pay for this. <laughs> I love that he immediately comes to the realization he just stole the shit. Oh, wow. The best part is, he could just have a cop arrest him and get let off because they don't have enough evidence because the cop works for him. That is actually a good plan. Yeah, it's a small enough time where that actually might work. All right, horse. Uh, open up. Vomit blood. Suck, suck. Now, uh, so D wanted me to keep you company. Oh, sorry, just audio choice here. Listen to this sound effect and tell me you don't sound moderately disgusted. Now, uh, sir. Mm. There are ways to describe that exact sound effect, and all of them are filling a toilet. And I'm not going to say another word because you know exactly what I mean. And I regret bringing it up, but I also don't think I'm wrong and I regret everything. Uh, do you want to oh. keep you company? So, also in context, that's what's your story actually? I've heard like seven different accounts from multiple people as to where you came from. Um, multi dimensional horse uh, Marcus once said Sir D inherited you from one of his mums or dads, one whatever of? that means. Adopted, but, uh, Sir D himself is pretty cavalier about it. I think he once implied you burst out of his skull like a Athena? Can that but happen? That might have just been uh, uh, m modern mythology in the making. Mm, probably uh, not modern right, if sorry. the age is right. <clears throat> well, Horses don't live over a hundred years. I guess the most likely story is Remold's. The old grouch. Who's Remold? He always claimed you were stolen from an old lady near Horsey Beach. But... This is normally where I go, there's no way there's actually a place called Horsey Beach in the UK. And then someone's going to be like, oh no, area, yeah, no, no, it's real. And then they'll go and give a link about a sign saying it's exactly as real as it sounds. But I'm not going to make that mistake because I have learned by now if it sounds incredibly stupid and they're making a joke about getting a horse on Horsey Beach, it is probably a real place. But god damn, who the hell names these things? Honestly, I'm pretty sure he thought D was the devil even before he got banned from the Arcanum, so... Oh! Oh! Okay, that actually does say a lot right there. Uh, oh, wow. So, Remold was part of the Arcanum. That means I'm assuming Arcanum would have to do with mages. It really doesn't make sense otherwise. I don't know what Arcanum is. I'm just making the assumption there because Arcana, Arcanum, that sounds very similar. If it's either that or maybe 
something to do with vampires because they technically have magic, but I would really doubt that. Ah, uh, okay. Also believing D was the devil. Yeah. Or was D banned from the Arcanum, not Remo? It doesn't even matter. Just, mm. There's the emphasis we need right now to realize Kitten has more knowledge about the supernatural than probably everyone else other than D himself. Before he got banned from the Arcanum, so I don't know. Oh, is that the sound? Ah, shit. I'm sorry. You're not looking too He really good. doesn't. I think it's fine to give you a second dose. Every couple seconds. Man, what even is this stuff? Nitric uh, acid? Well. Open wide, horse. Here comes the train. It's of uranium. <laughs> Ow! Oh! Oh! That is a lot of blood all over me. Just, just, just stay there, horse. I need to... <laughs> Shit. Okay, one, this is literally the most angry we've ever seen Kitten. And even the ears went flat. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Also, I realize horses are big animals, but that is a lot more blood than you can usually lose and stay alive. Granted, it could be done for comedic effect, but I'm giving them a lot more credit to a believe that in this case, it's not so much a real horse, obviously, because it's way older if Big D's talking about adventures they had in the more than 10 years old aspect. And I realized when he said it was a little bit longer than that. Uh, yeah. Fuck. I wonder what kind of beast he actually is. Oh, God. Flip phone opens. Oh. Oh, yeah, Marcus, flip phone. I also forgot about them. Marcus, could you come out to the horse's house? What? Why? Oh, God. He comes blood over me and I'm soaked in it. Can't you just leave him alone for a second and change? I nope. can't. Sir D said that he needs to be watched. Really? Said, just come back inside. Horses He's Marcus, really please, not. The horse is dying. Gracchus? Was that Gracchus? <laughs> please. Come I love out how they're so used to him being okay, a crazy old man. Fine, I'm out. Also, <sighs> wow, Marcus really looks rough. This is one of my favorite jumpers. Not anymore. Uh, I hope I can get this blood you out. You really can't. It's been too oh, long. So thick. Ugh. Medicine is everywhere. Uh, horse. Oh, little guy. <laughs> I just love his legs. And for most unique and hilarious walk, he's just double crutching it, letting his legs wrapped up in bandages drag behind him through the puddles in the rain. <laughs> because you even see the bleeding through them where he literally got shot through his legs. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is just peak situational comedy here. Oh, I can't God. stay mad at you, no matter how horrifically disgusting you are. Yeah. Marcus will be here soon, and I'll see if I can find the other bottles when I'm back. I'm sorry. I love just the sheer... I need to come back to it. Just this, this right here. <laughs> oh, hello there. Oh, cool. I didn't actually know that was a thing. I mean, uh, I definitely knew the up and down arrow could adjust the volume on YouTube. I definitely haven't gone literally five years on this site without realizing that was a feature. <laughs> uh, no one's going to believe that. I'm aware. More importantly, he gets all dressed up, puts on the thing to keep dry, and then drags the actual injured part of him, the most injured, literally from gunshot wounds, through the mud. <laughs> oh, jeez, I love that. Marcus will be here soon, and I'll see if I can find the other bottles when I'm back. Or damn well better be dying companion. Oh shit, he is. Oh shit. Yeah. Wait, what? Just uh, stay with him for a bit. I, I need is to horse go actually going to die in this What the hell happened? Blood? No. It smells like burnt hot dogs and KY jelly. Thanks, Oddly Marcus. Yeah, you know, I was actually heart. watching a documentary on the thing, right? It turns out they used a lot of KY jelly and all the special effects, which you wouldn't normally think of, right? But Marcus, actually, I am covered in horse goo. Right? Okay, one. KY jelly the thing. I'm actually going to believe that. It, it's disturbing and odd enough that I think that's probably a literal fact, but also for my own sanity, I'm not going to look it up in case it's real. Yeah. Just going to throw out there gooey uses of KY jelly is not something I want to Google on the internet at any point in time. No. You <laughs> no. Right, right. Just 
go inside, love. Wash up and I'll uh, uh, tend to horse. I'm gonna switch out to horse. So. <laughs> horse. Is he drunken titter? You, uh. eating a good hay lately? <laughs> no. Nice. He's the only person actually just. Like realizing it's looking at horse. Dry cough. Well, you're not ensanguinated yet, brother. How is he not, though? Uh, whatever. Maybe there's some epidemic going on. You probably picked this up at the saddle club. You know, Miss Crackapple? She has like horse diabetes and horse apnea. That's a thing? So does her horse. Might be mad horse disease or something. But how would a person pick that up from the. Ah, oh, that's what they're, um, for the sake of YouTube compliance, I am not going to finish this entire train of thought for the sake of my sanity. I'm also going to immediately forget everything I just said, because I don't want to have my mind go there. Oh, God, no. I'm that sorry, that's rupturing. Ah! Oh, God. Oh, Dad's at looks worse than horse there. Top shelf health care and, uh, I don't know, let's check your pamper kit. Pamper kit? Oh, yeah, it's really crushed. Crutch is over. Okay, horse, we got your brush and perfume, uh, gourmet carrots, they have gourmet carrots. And Sure, of course they do. Wait, is it? There's $600. Is this absinthe? What? How? Is that even allowed? I think it's not allowed in the UK. I know it's allowed in France, and I think it is situationally banned in America. It could have been more bad. I don't remember if it still is or not. I know there was a time where it is and might be in some locations beyond just regular alcohols. I don't entirely know. I think that's more of a patchwork. I could be mistaken, though. But more importantly, is this alcohol what's keeping the horse dying because it's literally too drunk to get better? That sounds stupid. So stupid, I'd actually believe someone's doing it. Okay, whatever father is doing, he is absolutely not helping. Normal. But also maybe you actually helping with that. As a cure all, I get frozen burritos on my bruises and an off-brand alcohol variety pack. How I mean, to be completely fair, you're still alive and it's technically working. How does one even make Veritas off-brand? I don't even know what Veritas is. Uh, is it like a medicine? Why do we put up with this? We is are off-brand and off-brand in pain. Hell, you know what these are? Bandages? These are supposed to be crutches. What are they actually? Because I sprained my ankles and then got them shot with a gun. And then and had your face beat in. that, lot. these crutches are indeed just the taped together remains of our stilts. And now he has the gall to force us to sit out here, meters from home, in this ancient barn, in the middle of a horrifying rainstorm. No. Horse, this won't do. We deserve better. <laughs> oh my god. Is Marcus setting up the horse heresy? <laughs> oh my god, he is, because he just... <laughs> All we need is random, just a few other random brothers they haven't introduced yet coming in and talking about how, Marcus, you know you need to be better with having random bullshit pulled out. And just fight him while also looking like a wolf. You know exactly what I'm referencing here. Horse revolution, I say. We both shall charge our way into the house. We shall boldly strut into his big room with his big bed and his big couch and with our shared Technically, might it's her fiance's it house. for our own and then demand immediate aspirin i mean one yeah that would help two technically you don't need to commandeer the house it is literally already your fiance's no matter how I mean, thin our blood is thin what blood? do you say brother oh, bloodborne reference will yes. you lead us dead oh, oh shit you probably should be in the medicine okay the yeah, absinthe might actually help fuck is the real medicine this one fuck no this is Adderall no those are mine okay <laughs> that actually promise. makes sense no dad never drinks thirst okay uh, no 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 uh, ha, got one 
Ah, God, the faces he has are okay, worse than the horse literally bleeding to death. Horse, I really, really do not need you to die right now. You are a ticket to proper Oh, there's that door now. Okay, fuck. Good. You'll be fine, I think. He's really not. Right. This medicine should clear you up. What kind did you give him? Oh, oh you mind grabbing me the absent. <laughs> Holy shit. Ooh, lightning, that's Marcus, nice. help me unload these boars. Boars? We won't need to buy American rashers anytime soon. Door, knock next time. Horse is trying to... American rashers. Door, I am disappointed in you. Rashers? I think your British is showing. Sleep. What? Horse is clearly awake. No, he's ill with horse plague. Father said so, and he's been forcing us to play midwife to him. Yep. Forcing? The door was not locked when I tried to open it. And honestly, yeah, for the... not like he locked the... us in. He didn't tell so anyone to do it. He didn't do it. you to stay here. He was asking for... And for... not you! Fuck, whatever. Just go. I am going to get the boars out into the freezer. I, have a freezer I was outside. hoping you could help me count them. There are many. How many boars did he kill? How many? I don't oh, know. Oh, that's why he was counting Help them, yeah. count them. Well, sorry, Dor, oh, actually, that's we're him. planning an insurgency here. What? Come now. It will be just a moment. I'm not <laughs> I love his reaction. What? The best reaction to talking about any possible horse heresy. I'm not letting that one go. I just... Leaving our brother alone. <laughs> If it was just one gallon of blood, it would I'd be go. bad. But this many? Yeah, honestly, they probably have oh, a red room at this serious. point. He looks to be Enough for a wedding. Not dying at the moment. Well, then maybe you can. Honestly, call no, he kind of looks like he's out. very much dying maybe at this moment. Maybe he so. should take some responsibility for a change, assuming he can count. That is very much depending on how many drugs he took. During his so-called math class, he put us through in Finland. Oh, so remember that. I remember only the lack of fiends in that cursed land. He he refused what? to give us the oh, answers to yeah. any formula, insisting we need to be able to figure them out ourselves. That was the second time I ended up in crutches. Nothing has changed. It is just one other funny little instance in a long line of painful fuck-ups. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Just those little moments where you can see that what he's trying to teach them and what they're trying to learn are very different things. Yes, it's math. But also the problems aren't the math he's trying to get. He's using the math as a way to tell them all the things he's supposed to do as a hunter. Like, hey, one vampire plus two vampires equals more vampires. And it was one plus one equals two. But still, that to this, unless the place he mentioned isn't actually in Finland and this is a different reference to a different time where he's actually trying to do math. Could be wrong. I don't know geography. I could be very off on this. I just... I love how we're seeing it from both sides on this one where he's trying to do something, but they think he's trying to do something else. And while they're not wrong, it also involves math. It's involving a lot more of the hunter things that he's trying to tell them without being very explicit about it, but they don't know to look for it yet. It's almost like he needs to sit them down for a talk about, okay, I'm going to have double meanings in everything I say, look for them, and don't die because you'll ask why. I know what I said, and exactly that. He would never do that because he's trying to do all the steps leading up to it. And Marcus is probably smart enough to get it if he was looking for it. Because again, Big D said he thinks just like him in the previous episode. Or at least previous audio log. Well, <sighs> we end up suffering as pawns sides. in the little game that is his version of reality. Literally, yes. Oh, we're still get back seat. Marcus. What door? Are you all right? No, he's really not. What? I'm asking if you're all right. Yeah, I'm relatively fine. Why wouldn't I be? Because you don't seem like you are. Okay, wow. I was surprised about that interlude earlier, about Big D even having that thought process to think, Maybe I should tell them. Maybe. Just that maybe. Even though he lost it. Even though it was a joke because Krakus was in there just howling abominably. All of that aside, he had the thought. And I was really blown away by that. It would even occur to him. And Dor showing a moment of emotional intelligence to read between the lines and tell that what 
is basically Marcus on the verge of a mental breakdown and being empathetic and asking and being kind. I just, I've never thought Dorn, for example, wouldn't have the capability to figure it out. I just thought he wouldn't because they're all kind of stalwart. And even in TTS, that wasn't really his characterization. Here, though, Dor is... It's just showing that he's growing beyond what he is spiritually based on from TTS. He is more of a character. He has more depth to him. Because he's... Even though they already played off his complete in-your-face literalism, like not enough fins in Finland, as an actual animal fins or fish fins or dolphin fins, or take your pick. They played up the joke aspect of it, but now they're playing it as him having that emotional intelligence, that ability to read between the lines to show that Marcus is saying one thing, but maybe he means something else without realizing and the fact that he's hurt. Not just physically, which he very much is, but mentally and physically and emotionally all in one. And he's noticing and just asking... Just... It's moments like this that I'm very surprised by the characters growing beyond what I expected. But I also like feel really warm and fuzzy because it's so cool to see that. Door? I'm okay. Marcus, really not. Please. Just tell me if you aren't. And that is probably the nicest thing I'm ever. I'm tired of the mental arithmetic that father no doubt goes through to justify his actions. And the thing is, it could have told sense us about the entire not getting your kids killed. What not to do during the interrogation. He tried. He could have told us anything at all, in fact. And we could have planned for them. Then, perhaps, my face wouldn't have been planted into the ground like a common turnip. Yeah. And the thing is, he's not wrong. But also, Big D's thought process on if they know, they will probably get dead is also going to hold up. But he can't tell them because the entire get dead thing could still happen. Granted, they almost got deaded for not telling him. It's literally a two-way street of fucked either way. By some shit heel. Hmm. And you know what's worse? Before. He is still not giving us the full scoop on what Diablery even is. He hops around the questions and talks about his new Ipswich ham meat. Why would I care? Hmm. Just... Ugh. Oh. Considering what he was talking about Ipswich earlier, talking about Ipswich ham meat is kind of an interesting reference. In a lot of stories or narratives or even just youtube is in general where they make a reference to the same location twice i would think it's just because they can i'm going to give speaker d and Ruva alpha Busa a lot more credit when it comes to writing because that kind of double reference to ipswich when also bringing the reference back previously to both sides of their interrogation or sorry their interpretations of the math lesson i'm assuming there's a reference there and he just doesn't get it hell i don't get it but i'm knowing or I know that there is something to it because that kind of double reference after already being shown that there's two sides to the story here and they're just not talking to each other. And in Big D's case, intentionally because that would be dangerous. There's something there and I'm just missing it. Horse is just another sterling example of us having to clean up after he acts upon whatever synapse spasms that happen to roil around his brain at any given time. Technically, that is how you think. One more poorly justified thing we have to deal with. <sighs> that he won't explain either. Are you not aware of what thoughts go on in father's brain most of the time? Yeah. Or any of the time. But... I believe he wants what's best for us. And his ultimate goal is to leave us safe. And he's not wrong. His failings as a parent, I can't condone. But his redaction of information when it comes to hunting the supernatural is needed. Needed? The few things that Father has confided in me about blanks has left me truly and utterly afraid. Oh. But even when it left me frightened as a British child, I had valued the insights he had shared with me. And that's twice now Doris absolutely stunned me. Acknowledging that he was afraid and that he was a British child. I'm assuming this is not a metaphor, but actually saying he was British and he became American as a way to get over the fear, but... Uh, wow. That just... Shocking character development all around. Oh, fuck, it's after 5 o'clock.
Okay, so I was actually planning to just go through and finish this entire video right now, but uh, I noticed the time and I needed to be somewhere 12 minutes ago because it's after five o'clock and it's not five o'clock anymore. And I am maybe very late, so shit. More importantly, I love this. This is great. The writing's good. They're giving these characters so many moments to grow beyond their source material or what they were inspired from. It's just so... If every video, every single episode and audio log before this was showing how they are, the characters we know, but slightly different. These are showing, this specific video is just showing all of the growth, how they're way more complex than even the jokes we're drawing from them as. Because they are still very much joke characters, but they have elements of seriousness and they're playing it up so damn well. I just, I keep saying this every video and I keep meaning it every time. The writing on this is just on point. God damn. But also, I am actually very late. I lost a lot of track of time. I meant to record this an hour ago. I thought I had time. I really should. I need to stop talking now and run. Yeah, so for everyone watching, thanks. Um, I'll try not to read Trailblazer from Endless Set 3 and lose three hours to crying into a blanket and sobbing because the goddamn story is just so emotionally gripping that I literally cannot. Just that I can't. Just that I cannot. Not even. It's good, but dear God, man. Oh, good shit. But yeah. All the same. Link below. Radio video. Hit it up. I'm going to come back later. Finish this because I need more of this. But I'll have to do that later because, again, I'm still procrastinating. I need to run. Fuck. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios. I am so very late. Oh, shit.